All right. So uh, this week, I wanted to show you. Yeah, yeah, glad you're welcome, Jordan. So I wanted to do the authentication labs. This is the, another easy topic and important from the Web Security Academy. So I've just logged into my Web Security Academy here. And um, found the authentication labs. Well, I thought I had found them. Now I've there we are. Here's the authentication labs, and I'll show you some easy ways and some harder ways to do this. So here's a lot of these labs. Let's go here to proxy history and clear all this old stuff. Okay, so the first one is where you learn how to do username enumeration. So I always open it in another tab as I've done before. And then I open the lab over here. And then there are instructions here telling you how to do it. And I'm gonna demonstrate it, but you can follow these instructions to see. So here, is a page to get into. And the goal here is to break into the account. And they tell you a list of usernames and passwords to try, 100 usernames and 100 passwords. So we're going to do a brute force attack. So I go into my account. And now I'm going to make a log. And see, here's all the get requests and post requests that loaded that page. Now I'm going to log in with, say, AAA and BBB, just anything to see what the login request looks like. So now I log in. And so now here's the post login. And here it is sending my username and password to the server. So this is the thing which I want to um, brute force. So I right click and send to intruder. The intruder is what does a variety of brute force and other related attacks. Let me clear these old ones. All right, sniper is the basic attack and these section marks are what determines what part of this you're going to vary. And notice it filled in, changed the session cookie, changed the username, changed the password. It always guesses too many. So you clear them all. And then you choose the one you want to use. So right now we're going to do username only and add this. So now I'm going to try to change. I'm just going to try different values for this parameter. And the password is always going to be BBB. So I'm counting on this to be one of those stupid login pages like we talked about in the lab, where you can tell from here whether you got the username. And notice the error was invalid username. It didn't just say failed login. So apparently, I can have a bad password and just keep trying usernames to get in. So that's what I'm going to do. So now um, I've just told it what to attack and what attack to use. Now I need to give it the payloads. And for them, I need my list of possible usernames. So that's here. So you go here and copy the 100 usernames. And then you go here and paste. And now it's got a list of 100 usernames. And then you start attack. And it warns you that it's going to be pretty slow just to irritate you and make you pay for the full version. You could, of course, get a 90-day trial of the pay version. <coughs> but there's another way to get around that that I want to show you after this. So there should be a uh, some clue. Oh, here we are. Another window opened showing the process. So here it is, trying all these usernames. And notice the length is always 2984. When it gets it, the length will be different. And it's already down to 20. So you know, with luck, we'll get it pretty soon. And uh, I'll let this go a bit. It's going to take two or three minutes if we have to go all the way to the end. And we can just scroll down and look. None of them are different yet. If the list gets too long, you can sort it here. Ah, I'm done. One of them's different. And to see if that works, oh, of course, you can do all this with Python. That's why I say, if you, if you know how to program Python, you don't even really need Burp at all. Burp is just a GUI for Python. 
All right, so 2986, if you look at this one, the response is, if you render it, incorrect password. So this is the correct username. The username is info. So we've succeeded in the first step. So now that I know the correct username is info, I can just cancel this attack. And now I go back to my history. Well, I can go back to my intruder actually here. And now I know I wanna put info here. So let's clear the section marks and put in info. And now I just wanna guess passwords. So I put the section marks there. And now I go to payloads. I clear the old stuff. And now I get the password options, which are here. All right, copy them and paste them in. And now just run the same attack again, which is uh, start. All right. And this time I could look at the length that would work, but it's really more likely is the status though, because typically when you successfully log in, it gives you a 302 redirect to go to like the user information page or something. So the status will often tell you that you got in. However, the links will be different too. So in a couple of minutes, it will probably find the correct name and password here. All right, and it's going off the bottom, so I'm going to start sorting. There's sorted one way, sorted the other way. Okay, haven't found it yet, but I'm only 31% of the way through, so I'll give it another few minutes. That looks like the new one's always showing up on top, so we'll see it when it comes in. There, I saw one that was different. Right now they're all coming different. I think something's happened, like my thing is timed out or something. No, it doesn't look terrible. Incorrect password, okay. But the length seems to have changed. That's a little disturbing. Let's see if the status has a 302 yet. Oh, it does. Okay, there we are. So it's Thomas is the right password. I don't know what happened to make the links change, but I don't really care. So Thomas is the password. And uh, info is the username. So now we can win. It's info Thomas. So let's go back to here. And it's info and Thomas. and you win. And it changes that every time. So that is the classic way to do it that they tell you. Now there is, of course you could write your own Python, but what I really wanted to show you is another one of these burp extensions, Turbo Intruder is really the cat's meow. If you go to extender, it's down here, Turbo Intruder. This is the script that lets you write custom Python easily and it runs really fast with no rate limiting. So let's just hack into the same challenge with Turbo Intruder. And I'm going to um, refresh the lab because I think it kind of times out after a while. So I'm going to go here. Okay, and the way you use Turbo Intruder 
is just like before, you need to have a request to start from. So I'm going to make a fresh one in case things have changed. So HTTP history, clear all the old history. Okay, and now I want to make a login request. So I got to log out first. And now try logging in again. Okay, again with AAA and BBB. Okay, there's the post with the AAA and BBB. Looks like it hit C, but it doesn't matter. So there's my problem. I do right click extensions, Turbo Intruder. Now, you, what you have to do is you have to highlight it before you go. So I'm going to highlight the username. That's what I want to attack. Now I right click extensions. Turbo Intruder, send to Turbo Intruder. And Turbo Intruder gives you a little Python script to work from. And I'm going to use the examples basic Pi. And here's the basic Pi. Now you need to make a dictionary of the words. And I made one. And I think I got the uh, start of it. Uh, yeah, here. Good. So I put it here, containing those same words. I made this file, users, my username, downloads, downloads, and then I called it usernames. There, that's the file that contains the usernames. Now it's going to do five connections at a time, 100 results per connection. That's a request per connection. So we'll try this. And if it's like before, this is going to fail. But let's see if it works. So there should be a start attack button somewhere. Um, why don't I see it? Ah, oh, down here, attack. OK, attack. And notice I'm getting different times, different lengths. Some of them are only four. Um, and down here, it's done 86 requests, but it had to do 73 retries and 12 fails. So it's going so fast, the server can't keep up with it. So this is not good. So let's go cancel this one, halt, go back to configure. I just had to slow it down. And I found out that just slowing down concurrent, concurrent connections seemed to work. Slow it to three connections instead of five. That seemed to work okay for these Web Security Academy things. So I'll start the attack again. And now see, it's working pretty well. No fails. And I'm getting the same length every time. And it's already up to 46, 53, 60. It's going to do all 100 in just a few seconds. So it's done. It's done all 100. So now I just need to sort by, say, length and length. And they're all the same. This is going to mess up my beautiful demo. Length. Oh, there it is, 49.23. So it's info. I guess it's the same as before. So info is the username. Now let's do the password. And um, the easiest way is to just start back from here, the password. Let's, uh, let's put in info. Yeah, I'll put it in later. Highlight this, right click, uh, extensions, turbo intruder, send to intruder. OK. And now um, I need to use passwords instead of usernames. OK, and now I need to fill in the username of info up here. OK, and now I think we're in business. And notice the syntax is a little different. This percent %s is what it uses, but we don't need to worry about that. It's set to go with three concurrent connections and 100. I think it will just run. There it goes. We're up to 15, 21, 27, and no fails. 45, 53, zipping right along. And we didn't have to pay anything. <laughs> this extension um, sort of obviates the need to pay for burp if you're willing to put up with the fact that this is like less tested code. Now I short for status and status again. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. We have to click here. Try sorting my length. OK, there it is. It's, there's the status somehow didn't sort correctly. 
might be why you want to pay for Bert to get a better stuff. But anyway, the things worked and there it is, Thomas. And remember, info Thomas is the right answer. So that's what I wanted to show you for that one. And um, let's take a look at one more of these web security academies while I manage. Uh, so there was the username enumeration. And next one is two-factor authentication simple bypass. This one's pretty fun too. So I'll access the lab here. And the point is it's using two-factor. So we have an account, Wiener Peter, and we're trying to break into Carlos Montoya's account, but we don't have the two-factor authentication token. And so this one here, the vulnerability is in fact insecure direct object access. So Wiener Peter is good credentials. So what you do is you log into Wiener Peter. So W-I-E-N-E-R and Peter. Okay, so I log in with the right password. Oops, I must have done it wrong. Okay, W-I-E-N-E-R, Peter. Okay, I probably just typed it badly. W-I-E-N-E-R. Oh, caps, that'll do it. W-I-E-N-E-R, tab, Peter. All right, so I log in with a good name and password. And now it's going to ask me for a two-factor token. So I have to go here to my email client where it sent me the two-factor. And my two-factor code is 0839. So I put in 0839 and log in. And the point is this two-factor is not really secure. Instead of requiring the two-factor code to let you in, it just redirects you to this, uh, this page. So you copy that page. This is just the vulnerability we're talking about in lecture where there's multiple steps, but you can do the steps out of order. So now to get in the other guy's account, we log out and we put in the other person's name, Carlos Montoya. And log in. Now it's going to ask me for his two factor token. But what I do is I just paste in the URL to the third step. And now I'm in as Carlos Montoya because the second step just redirected to the third step, but it did not verify that you had completed the second step before you went to the third step. So this is an example of the, what we're talking about in lecture. Um, you can skip the intermediate step and get to the end. So uh, that's all I wanted to show you today. I'm going to stop this recording.